Do you hear the birds? They're coming to consume you. Mm, welcome. Greetings. I hope you're all doing well. Today I wanted to talk about Danadan. More specifically, why I think it's one of the more unique stories currently within the mainstream public eye. There's a lot of reasons for this, and I want to go through some of the more specific things that the story does to make this possible. Here's some things that you may like from Danadan. Mongolian deathworm. A giant crab. A granny that runs extremely fast, and if you don't beat her, you get possessed. A Loch Ness monster that eventually morphs with another crustacean and shoots laser beams while swimming around in a flooded school. Or how about a invisible kaiju versing a robotic Buddha Gundam made out of nanomachines which was originally a house that is controlled by your imagination. Pretty impressive, right? A lot of great variety and creativity there and overall it just spells out fun through and through from start to finish. This story may not be for everyone, but for me this utter creativity and unbridled chaos is really valuable in today's public weekly manga mainstream. Of course, if you take two steps out of the main public spotlight and just go explore manga in all of its forms, you're going to find some very creative things. But within the weekly medium, within stuff that's getting translated and becoming more easily accessible, there's a bit of a repetitiveness to everything. There's concepts that popular manga have that get boiled down and passed on to so many other stories to try and rinse and repeat that success in some sort of fashion. Some are more egregious than others, but at the end of the day, it's business. It's a mixture of this author creating the story with the business trying to create their own concept or bridge over pre-existing popular concepts to make more money. Dana Dan stands out like a knight in shining armor, sparkling within all of its glory from top to bottom. Simply, it just does not follow the same rules. And this has been one of the best things that it could have ever done. Because currently, for me, it is the only story within the mainstream that is able and allowed to do whatever it wants. And it absolutely works. It can create the dumbest, wackiest, corniest situation and clash it with something just as equal to it and it will work and not a lot of stories can do that let alone even attempt to try and do that in the grand scheme Dan and Dan is a brilliant breath of fresh air allowing its creativity shine even brighter every single week with every single idea that it brings in the way it does this is pretty self-explanatory but it looks at something a little like this a lot of your stories are built from the ground up right you start off you gotta lay your foundation and this foundation is going to hold every single aspect of your story up and into the future all the way to its ending. If you're writing a romance story, that's going to be within your foundation. That's what people are going to be used to. That's going to be your consistency and your reader's comfort. However, if you suddenly turn that romance story into a zombie apocalypse, monsters that eat humans, people gaining superpowers, it's going to feel very weird. It's going to feel convenient or out of place. Some may even absolutely hate it. If those things that you're adding much later on are not within your foundation, are not teased or drip fed through the story progressively so people can become accustomed to the idea without fully revealing it of course, they're not going to like it, they're not going to enjoy it, they're not going to appreciate it and you may find yourself hard stuck in the idea of writing a romance because that is what you set out to write to begin with. Over time your intentions may change but the readers will only be comfortable with what you started with unless you put in that work, unless you start to drip feed content over time. You need to warm people up to changing ideas, to new and exciting adventures that you want to bring within your narrative. So what if a story gives you everything and can do everything all at once? What does that look like? Well, it looks exactly like Dana Dan, except even then some sort of foundation has to be there. Some sort of consistency or comfort or in this case level of expectation has to be there. And a way that Dana Dan does this very simply, very effortlessly, is that they give us two categories, aliens and curses. And within curses, you get spirits and folklore, but they're all kind of a similar thing. Those two categories are what's going to be filled with endless creativity and potential because the sheer amount of complex ideas that can go within both of those categories is endless. This is the propellant of Dana Dan's story. Aliens, which can be completely crafted by your own imagination, which obviously is endless. But then you have curses, which are more grounded in reality, taking folklore or stories or this or that 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 people are already kind of scared of within Japan or around the globe and then you give it a physical form. Just doing 
this allows Dan and Dan to explore a plethora of avenues while still keeping that consistency and comfort people are used to. And the way it helps knuckle this down even further is with its characters and its tone. See, for me, Dan and Dan has very great characters. On the surface, they're simple, but underneath, they have a bit of depth, they have a bit of nuance, but they're extremely identifiable. They're also fun and lovable, but connected to either the alien category or the cursed spirit folklore category. So Momo uh, is someone that comes in contact with aliens and actually gets her abilities awakened by them. So now she basically has the force. She has telekinetic abilities and able to lift objects up with her mind that has some sort of slight physical representation to it, which is very mystical and not of aura driven. And she's able to suppress or control and just do a lot of crazy things. She's a very powerful individual. She's kind of the bridge between both categories because inherently her abilities and her a grandmother are more spiritual, but the awakening comes from aliens. Ken is someone that comes in contact with a spirit and ultimately gets possessed and he has to learn to control it. Both of these characters are beautiful introductions to what comes after because you get the most obnoxious highest thing from both of them straight from the get-go. So everything you get after is pretty self-explanatory and you do eventually get it. You get another character that is possessed by a seven foot, eight foot muscular acrobatic stunt woman that's a curse. You meet a boxing hermit crab, torso within a lab that's actually alive, the evil eye that possesses another individual. There's just so many things that go into each character that is so comfortable and consistent, which are very key words to keep readers that way because of how everything is introduced very early on. So you know what you're going to get to an extent, but every time you get it, it's still fun and energetic and creative and the characters bridge that perfectly. The last thing that wraps everything together and keeps things stable and consistent is its tone. You don't notice the shift in tones all too often because of how non-serious it takes itself. I would argue the first chapter is the only odd one out where the tone is a little bit darker in some places comparative to others but over time it kind of levels itself out and really becomes consistent and links all of these insane things that are going on to each other perfectly. So us as readers don't feel some sort of whiplash with every new creative idea that comes in that's bigger or crazier or wackier than the other because that tone is able to keep it consistent. Now where it does spike or dip is more so related to its characters when we're getting emotional moments or romantic moments or stuff that is uh, mentally or physically taxing for the individual. There's depth there but it's not overbearing or overshadowing. It's just enough to allow you to appreciate the complexity behind some of these characters while on the surface they're pretty goofy and simple and fun to indulge. Within. So you have beautiful, lovable characters, incredible amount of super creative ideas that are constantly getting one-upped and challenged every single time, as well as a consistent tone to help wrap everything together very nicely. So you have a story that can tell anything any way that it wants. Your imagination is quite literally the limit. And I think what helps emphasize all of this even further and really gives it a new sense of life and purpose is the artistic flair that goes into it. The author is ridiculous when it comes to perspective and detail and just all of these super interesting things that you're managing to witness. You're getting this on a weekly basis and the chances of you getting multiple double spreads is like 90%. Double spreads are the two big pages that are linked together so it's just one big piece of artwork basically and normally you'd get one of these maybe once a week if you're lucky. In Dan and Dan's case you're getting two to three of these every single week and this is a brand new author. This is someone that has not been around for very long. This is someone that was assistant to Tatsuki Fujimoto and you can probably tell with all of the things that have been absorbed by Fujimoto's identity. It has been rebirthed within Dan and Dan within its own style and fashion and it has created a story that stands out within its own regard that is the only story that is allowed to do anything it wants compared to others. I don't think any other story has the freedom that Dan and Dan has. It doesn't automatically make it better or worse but for me personally it allows a point of relief for for readers. If you're bored of the weekly stories or if you're over this style or this type of narrative, Dan and Dan is going to offer something that's going to challenge you every single week. It's going to give you a brand new idea. And while the overarching narrative may not be the strongest, may not be what you're looking for, it makes up for it with the overall entertainment value. See, Dan and Dan's narrative is not an easy one to do. Not a lot of authors would be able to achieve this, let alone be able to gain popularity through it. Because because of how inconsistent it can 
feel for readers, you have to be careful. You have to create consistency. You have to make them feel comfortable. If you don't do any of those things straight from the get-go, people aren't going to continue reading. It's going to feel flippant. It's going to feel corny. Dan and Dan has done so much work to make this story possible. And it's crazy because you don't even really see it. It's all of the little things, the micromanagement, the foundation of the story itself, how much it gives you and how much it keeps away from you. It's all pacing and consistency and keeping this tone that blankets everything so perfectly. You never get too overwhelmed, but you never become bored or complacent. You enjoy what it gives you and it knows how long to stick with things within chapters. Dan and Dan will always be there as something that's just fun and entertaining and filled to the brim within every single aspect. It's characters, it's world, it's identity, chaoticness, and all of the unique ideas that come out to play. It may not be the deepest, darkest, most thought-provoking, but it doesn't have to be, nor was it ever intended to be. Yet it is the only story that can do absolutely whatever it wants, and it works. Funny that, huh? When you let your authors create the story that they envisioned originally, not controlled or puppeted by corporations or popular successful concepts or themes, but just allowing an author to create the work that they wanted to do from the very beginning, at a pace or rate that they feel healthy and comfortable with. That's valuable. That's impressive. That's the stories that we all want to read. So hopefully we see more of them within the future. Bigger, better, and more vibrant than ever. One can hope, huh?